Viruses are more complicated and tricky than we think sometimes, and I'm here at Worcester Polytechnic Institute to talk to biochemist Destin Heilman about how we can use some of viruses' tricks to fight cancer. So I learned about viruses in middle school and learned that they were kind of simple biological robots that aren't alive and don't do anything interesting, but that's not really true, is it? Not necessarily, no. There's a lot of information about viruses that are larger than certain bacteria. There are viruses that are more complex than certain bacteria, have more genes than certain bacteria. There are cases where certain bacteria that live inside of cells are less autonomous than certain viruses. So I think it's a very interesting question and it's up to individuals to decide whether they think viruses are alive. I personally think they certainly are. But one thing that is definitely true is that a bacteria and a virus particle are very different looking and very different structure. Yeah. I think of a bacteria as kind of a, a squishy, spongy thing, but viruses are, are hard, right? Well, I, I, I don't know how, 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 the, how they would feel if you were able to blow <laughs> them up and do that, but um, I think Yes, I mean, they're, they're very different from each other. They Bacteria, have more of a, of, a, of a strong structure, at least. Th they do, yeah. So, so viruses are, are quite simple if you, if you boil them down. So not unlike this baseball, a virus has a, a capsid. It's got this protein shell that's made out of different pieces. So, so not unlike the different pieces of leather stitched together, uh, there are different protein pieces that form the capsid of the virus. And then if you were to kind of peel away that, that capsid, uh, not unlike a baseball, you would find inside there's all these, this big ball of string, um, which is a, a pretty good analogy for, uh, for the, the nucleic acid that's inside. So viruses have genomes just like any other organism on the planet, and that genome is, is a lot of DNA or RNA that's crushed up uh, inside of the virus particle. So a virus actually has a, a covering and it's full of DNA string and mm -hmm. that's how it does its thing. That DNA is what it puts into, it, it invades a cell with that DNA, and then the DNA is used to make more viruses or change the way the cell works, right? Yeah, so the viruses will transfer that, that genetic material inside of a cell, and the cell will express those genes, and it will make proteins that will hijack the cell, it will make proteins that form the actual capsid of the virus and things like that, all toward assembling new virus particles and having them come out of the cell in, in, in a bunch of different ways. Either the cell will burst because it just fills up with virus, or they'll actually gently bud out to leave the cell still intact and producing lots of virus particles. So viruses turn cells into virus factories, basically. Pretty much, yeah. There's some viruses that are very, very interesting. Some of the larger ones, like these mimi viruses, these microbe mimic viruses, they're so large, they're arguably larger than back some bacteria. Um, they make these giant literally factories inside the cell. They look like volcanoes and, and they, they spew out all of these virus proteins and, and, uh, and, and assemble them and, and, and they, they come out of the cell in one of a few different ways. Now when I think of the way cells work and the way organisms work, they spend most of their time trying to keep stuff like that from happening, right? So yeah. how is a virus sneaky enough to not only get into a cell but to convince the cell to start making more viruses instead of doing what it normally would do? Right. Um, well, I, I tend to think of it maybe in two different strategies. Um, one strategy is that certain viruses are fast. They're very fast. They get inside of a cell, they replicate themselves in a matter of hours, and then burst out, destroying the cell. So it's just a matter of speed. The cell doesn't have time to adapt. I think the other strategy is you find in more highly evolved viruses, viruses that have more complex genomes, they have um, membranes that surround the capsid, more complex structure. They actually have genes that will code for proteins that will interact with some of the cell machinery to turn those mechanisms off. So they can actually take the machinery or the mechanisms for how the cell would discover that the virus is there and turn them off. Sounds like sneaking into a place and turning off the alarm system before yeah. it goes off. There's a lot of virus subterfuge involved in <laughs> those strategies. And there are some viruses and the ones that you look at that are so specific that they only attack cells that have become cancerous. Yeah. And that can be useful to us, right? Yeah, exactly, right. So one thing we know is that viruses have evolved along with cells for a long time, and they've evolved mechanisms to really um, to interact with a lot of different machinery, and especially viruses that are, that are so specific that they, um, that they even attack only cancer cells. So we stand to learn a lot from them. Uh, there are a lot of surface proteins that viruses use to attach to cells that we can study. 
there are a lot of proteins that the virus has produced to hijack those cells. In particular, I'm interested in studying some of these proteins that are produced that have activities that are only there in cancer cells. And so it stands to teach us a lot about what makes a cancer cell different from a normal cell and how are these viruses able to detect that this is a cancer cell and not a normal cell. In some cases, they even kill the cancer cells. Is that something that we could use to fight cancer in the future? I'm hoping. So, <laughs> um, I, I think so. So viruses understand cancer a lot better than we do, and they've evolved with cancer and, uh, as well as normal cells for, for a long time. If we can learn a lot about how these proteins are working and how we can specifically target perhaps a, an activity in a cancer cell that's not in a normal cell, we can target drugs to the cancer cells. We might be able to use a virus itself to bind it to the surface of a cancer cell to deliver either a gene or some sort of compound. So there are a lot of different methods that we can use, but it takes that understanding of the differences between cancer cells and normal cells that viruses may know. Well, it uh, sounds promising the way you describe it. Thank you. Thanks.